Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Uh, I'm going to start this video out showing some drive hubs for some oil pumps that I've been working on. And it's kind of inspired, you know, why I wanted to convert a chuck to fit the milling machine. This is one of the hubs I'm making and all I want to do is just do a little skim cut on the outside just to clean it up a bit. And, um, you know, what I do is just stick it right into Live Center just put a little nylon disc in there and just the friction of the uh, or the force of the tailstock right up against the the chuck you know holds it just fine these drive hubs are for the oil pump that supply oil to these big gearboxes and I've showed some of the gearboxes in some previous videos well, what happens is the the original drive hubs do not engage that full tang there and what happens is that they end up wearing right in to that drive area on the shaft so what I do is go ahead and go in and weld the shaft up and end up making some larger hubs that have full engagement and they use the full length of the tang And that brings us to the chuck. What this is, it's a 12 inch chuck. It came off a old, old LeBlanc lathe that I parted out years ago. And I kind of even forgot I had the chuck. It was kind of in the rat hole. And I thought it would be a perfect candidate to make a four jaw mill chuck. I wanted something that I could clamp up on the milling machine and be able to clamp material in it and be able to set the material a little bit lower where the cutter could pass right between a couple of the jaws or actually all of the jaws when I'm using the super spacer I've only got a three jaw chuck on it so I have to raise it up high enough to clear the cutter and on this one um, I want to mount it to my uh, K&T uh, horizontal mill which you know, I think it's going to clamp a whole lot better than my super spacer. The chuck was in pretty good shape as far as not much wear, but it was kind of beat up a bit. You know, so I'm just taking a skin cut to clean it up. I did not want to use those holes for clamping it down permanently. I wanted to come on the all the way on the outside where it's real close to the outside ribbing so when you tighten it down I felt like there would be no distortion or very little distortion if I would have used those closer to the center they had a void underneath and I felt like it would have tweaked and you know kind of put the chuck in a bind when you tighten it up
camera I'm punching through with a half inch drill bit and then I'll go over with just a slightly oversized one just to give me a little wiggle room Here, having the nuts recessed down underneath the surface will give me a give me a nice smooth top, um, all around better I think for whatever I want to clamp up to it. Just doing a little light deburring on it. Thank <laughs> you. 
here after it's washed, rinsed off, and then uh, blown off. I put some uh, rust inhibitor on it just to kind of keep it from flash rusting. After it comes out of the glass feed cabinet, the wire wheel does a really nice job, of, you know, kind of buffing it up a little bit. Not really sure the correct term, but I'll call them the scrolls that move the uh, individual jaws in and out. And these pins, they're extremely hard. You can't even touch it with a file. Those are the thrusts for the, the scroll. So when you're tightening it up or loosening whatever side of the jaw you're on, all the force is up against the hardened pins. And those tapered uh, head bolts when they go in, they spread the uh, pins apart, and they kind of lock it in the body of the of the chuck, keep kind of lock them in place. What I like about this style of chuck, if you want to clamp something round up, you know, at the very tips of the jaws, you have a slight radius. Where if you want to clamp up something square or rectangle, you also have the flat spots on the jaws. So, you know, when you're moving the jaws out, you still got a nice straight parallel lines for, uh, you know, clamping whatever type of material in there you want. Here I got the uh, the pins kind of tapped up, you know, as far as I'll go, you know, right up against the scrolls. You know, now I'm just setting the tapered pins to lock them in place. I was thinking I was going to have to use a socket, but the wrench fits in there no problem. Here just showing the old one of the old worn out drives and then that's the, the factory new drive. And then the large one are the new ones I'm making.
and this probably shows best what I was wanting I was wanting as much support on my materials I could get and have the cutter while running on the horizontal mill be able to pass right between the, uh, the jaws I've been working on a parking attachment so I can take the head off of the horizontal mill um, just haven't got it finished up yet I want to thank my new subscribers and if you like this content please give it a thumbs up and if you're not a subscriber and you like this content uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button once again, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video.